A new set of vulnerabilities for the F5 Big IP appliances is now being exploited in the wild. you have a story about a pretty large vulnerability for F in F5. So there's, you know, I think it was almost literally a year ago exactly that we had another very large F5 big IP vulnerability uh, back in March 2020. And again, we have a new one um, that just uh, was made announced by F5 uh, in their big IP and big IQ products. Uh, these are basically, um, you know, large firewalls or load balancer uh, type products that they have. And there's been several vulnerabilities that they announced on the 10th. Um, at the time when they announced these vulnerabilities, they weren't um, necessarily being exploited in the wild. But since uh, the patches are available now, so they put some patches out. And uh, since that time, um, you know, some people have reverse engineered it and they've determined how to exploit this vulnerability. So we're starting to see some exploitation in the wild of this vulnerability going on. So there's a couple of things to pay attention to um, with this vulnerability. First of all, you know, hopefully if you went through this whole patching process last year during the last F5 big IP vulnerabilities that were announced, uh, you probably have a pretty good list of what equipment needs to be patched this time. Um, also, this one's a little bit better because you got a little advance notice. The patches were released prior to them being exploited in the wild. Um, so you have some opportunity. So if you haven't already patched, I would say patch right away. The vulnerabilities that um, are vulnerable here, you do need to kind of chain some exploits together. So there's a server-side request forgery vulnerability that allows you to kind of uh, get an authentication token without actually really being authenticated. And then uh, you can use that token to do a remote code execution uh, vulnerability into the uh, uh, device. And um, there's several uh, CVEs that are uh, listed. If you go to F5's website, they'll list them all for you. Um, and I believe now uh, some um, vendors like Snore and Emerging Threads have some signatures out there uh, that are able to detect some of the common uh, exploit tactics that they use here. Um, the uh, uh, typically what I would say is, uh, you know, most often I think the, uh, the service that this is being targeted on, it's a web service, uh, HTTP uh, REST interface basically, that's usually running on port 8100 uh, TCP. So that's where typically I think by default it's uh, operating, but it's probably changeable. Uh, I checked for an uptick on scanning on this. I didn't really see uh, a super, you know, large increase in scanning, but, you know, this was really just announced last week or maybe um, maybe 10 or so days ago, I think, when this vulnerability was initially announced. So there might be some time for, uh, for increased scanning to show up on here. Um, but long story short, something you definitely want to patch um, because the remote code execution vulnerabilities that are in there uh, do execute as root, um, you know, with basically super user privileges on the device. Uh, they could, you know, pretty much do whatever they want once they, uh, um, if they could find a device that is exploitable and hasn't been patched. So good thing to patch and then maybe even retroactively just go make sure that nothing actually happens to the device um, in between the time that um, the patches were released and now if you haven't patched already. Sure. You know, it's interesting that uh, I think the last couple of, uh, you know, large scale um, vulnerabilities like the recent um, Microsoft uh, Office 365 vulnerabilities and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, we're starting to see a trend where um, they seem to be exploited in the wild prior to information about the patch being released. Whereas in this case, if you know there's not an uptick of scanning or anything, I think that suggests that this is something that's just brand new. No one, no attacker or maybe APT actor has had any advance notice of it. Right, prior to the patches right, being right. released. Um, right. Yeah, I was a little surprised that I didn't see as much of an uptick in scanning on it. Although, you know, if some vendors moved it to other ports that, um, besides port 8100, then, I, you know, I, I don't know. It depends on how people deploy and configure it, right. uh, you know, in practice and whether they would actually allow that. Um, it's basically a, a management interface, whether, you know, normally, you know, most 
firewall administrators are pretty network savvy. Like, I, I probably don't want to expose this to the internet. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, whereas some other types of things like, um, you know, a content management system like Joomla or something where it's kind of turnkey and people can just install things like that. Um, and they don't really know what they're installing. Right. Um, I guess, you know, the people who would normally set up and administer an F5 device is probably got a higher um, te technical level right. uh, to know how to protect it even, you know, out of the gate. Hopefully that's the case. I'm kind of, you know, hedging my bets there. But uh, uh, you're right uh, in that we haven't really seen. Uh, personally, I looked in our uh, honeypots. I didn't see any scanning over the past week or exploit attempts against any of our honeypot equipment. Um, so, you know, that's a good sign where we see a lot of other ones. Uh, you know, when we talk about internet weather, I usually go through some of those. So, um, you know, definitely something to keep an eye on now since, uh, you know, literally they said uh, it was like maybe last Thursday they started to announce that they were seeing it being exploited in the wild. And then on the 20th, there were some new changes in some of that behavior. So that's pretty recent, right? That's, uh, you know, it's the 20th was that last Saturday. So we're talking about, you know, not very much time has passed here. So I, I think, right. that, you know, time might tell if uh, sure. their patterns change. We, we can, can hope, hope for the good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can hope that everyone patches and everything's good to go. Uh, but yeah. I think uh, the, historically on this show, we have case after case of that not actually happening. Right. And I mean, I guess one of the other upsides, what I was kind of alluding to as well, is an F5 appliance is not a kind of uh, uh, inexpensive appliance usually. So you're not, you know, a lot of times when we talk about these types of vulnerabilities, especially these wormable type of ones where there's a remote code execution vulnerability and some sort of, you know, a router hardware. It's usually like the small embedded routers that people might have for their home and, you know, in the consumer spaces. F5 is a little bit a bigger of an appliance for, you know, a larger organization. Um, not to say that, you know, you have to be a very large organization, but, you know, most businesses and stuff would have them. And they probably have staff that are going to be maintaining and supporting those um, as opposed to a consumer type device that usually gets turned on and ignored and never patched. Um, you know, which we talk about a lot on the show as well. So, uh, you know, definitely a good one to keep an eye on. And uh, like I said, it's relatively new. So I guess we're going to see over time if we see additional exploitation on it. I know when the stuff happened last year, back in the March 2020 timeframe or March, April timeframe there, um, that there was a lot of um, a lot of organizations concerned about it. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking or hoping that now that we all kind of went through that fire drill last year uh, to identify, get good lists together of all our equipment and patch right. it in various, you know, I'm not saying, you know, at and I'm saying uh, organizations in general, general out there in the world. Uh, they have a, you know, good asset inventory of everything that needs to get patched. So they probably are a little bit more uh, ready to go uh, having done that fire drill once last year already. Right. Uh, for a very similar type of exploit. So, John, out of curiosity, how often, I know we talked about F5 having a vulnerability last year, but how common do you think this is with these very large networking companies that they see this kind of vulnerability? Um, well, I mean, that's a good question. I don't know exactly how common it is. I know that we've had quite a few. You know, I think Manish alluded to the um, uh, the Microsoft Exchange vulnerability that's, you know, a recent one that really impacted a lot of, I mean, that's a, that was a pretty massive vulnerability in terms of the scope and breadth that it covered. Um, but, you know, even like in the router type spaces, I know that there have been, you know, F5 isn't alone. Uh, there have been some other ones and the names are escaping me. Right around the same time last year, there was a, another manufacturer that also had, um, some, uh, Citrix. Maybe, I don't think, was it Citrix? Citrix, the ADC bug. Okay, yeah. maybe. Larger it one. was one with Juniper, but they, Juniper. they're not as common.